Welcome. We are about to embark on a journey of discovery, of wonder, philosophy. Believe it or not, our elected leaders are currently working to uncover the truth of the UFO presence on our planet. But first, let's go back to where the modern day flying saucer craze began. Ah, the 1940s, a time when the skies were filled with dreams, swing dancing was all the rage, a time before the term UFO made its debut. Throughout recorded history, humans have been seeing unexplainable objects in the skies, but it wasn't until 1947's highly publicized sighting by Kenneth Arnold that the term flying saucer became popular. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Intelligence representative at a high level from the US government is saying publicly, we are not alone. You solemnly swear to refer to the testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. We're definitely not alone. Kenneth Arnold was a respected businessman, experienced pilot, and a member of an Idaho search and rescue unit, what most would call a credible individual. Trust me. On June 24, 1947, while Arnold was flying, he saw a bright flashing light. Fearing he might be close to another aircraft, he scanned the skies and, with the assistance of ground radar, determined the nearest aircraft was about 15 miles behind him. Then, about 30 seconds later, Arnold sees a series of bright flashes off to his left north of Mount Rainier. At first, he wondered if they were reflections on his windows, but after a few tests, including rocking his plane from side to side, removing his glasses, and rolling down his side window, he ruled this out. He was sure they were flying objects. He said they flew in a long chain, and he considered they could be a flock of birds, but quickly ruled this out due to the bright glint altitude and sheer speed they were traveling. He then thought maybe they were a new type of jet, but he couldn't spot a tail. This speeding formation of nine shiny UFOs was puzzling indeed. So Arnold decided to time their passage from Mount Rainier to Mount Adams where they faded from view, a distance of 50 miles, which took them one minute and 42 seconds to cover. This came to, uh, minus three, carry the nine, over 1,700 miles per hour. Uh, that was three times faster than any aircraft we had at the time. Now, not knowing exactly when they faded from view, he conservatively rounded down to 1,200 miles an hour, which is still twice as fast as anything we had at the time. When Arnold landed and described what he saw, he said they flew like a saucer would if you skipped it across the water. Now, he only intended to describe their motion, not their morphology, which was more of a crescent shape. But the media ran with it, and flying saucers became mainstream. Huh, typical media. Oh, they're probably just drones. We didn't have drones back then. Oh. In the weeks that followed, several hundred reports of similar sightings flooded in from around the world, and the flying saucer craze began. Then in 1952, just five years after Arnold's sighting, the U.S. Air Force coined the phrase UFO, and the rest was history. Uh, we call them UAP now. Oh, f that's right. UFOs were rebranded UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. Actually, they changed it again to Unidentified Anomalous Phenomenon. What's the f difference? Well, not all of them are aerial. They've been seen up in space or under the ocean. Anomalous pretty much covers everything. Okay, fine, whatever. In this series, we'll dive into everything UFO, UAP related, to all the various government programs studying the phenomenon, like Project Sign, I mean, Grudge. Oh wait, now it's Blue Book? Then supposedly the Condon Committee put an end to this around 1970. Except in 2017, the New York Times uncovered two more programs, ATIP and OSAP. So they never really stopped studying them, did they? This then forced the formation of the UAP Task Force. Scratch that, I mean the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group. That's a mouthful. All right, let's call it the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. Okay, what's up with the government constantly rebranding everything, and how many programs do we need to study something that doesn't exist? Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Until next time, be good to each other, and I'll see you on the flip side.